do people in France go about getting weapons? It's not as easy to get them as it is in other countries like the United States. Yes, of course, but you should remember that Strasbourg is a town uh, on the border with the Germany. It's not very far from Belgium, and we know that arms trafficking are very uh, fluent if I may say so, uh, between uh, uh, Eastern Europe, Germany, and Brussels. So, of course, it is hard to uh, get some weapons, but when we look at the profile of this attacker, so a former criminal, you know, we can, we can suppose that he has some, uh, some clues where to get, where to get uh, weapons, as other uh, terrorist uh, attackers that uh, committed attacks uh, in Europe. Even the 13th of November Paris attacks, they, uh, they fabricated their explosive in Europe, and they bought their arms in, in Brussels. Even for the Kwashi brothers who attacked Charlie Hebdo in the name of Al-Qaeda, they also bought their weapons uh, in a border town next to, next to Belgium. So this goes into the, 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 the spectrum of arms trafficking in Europe, mm. not specifically France. We were talking before about the suspect being radicalized. Have we heard anything from the Islamic State group or other terrorist groups? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Uh, there's many uh, fake news uh, on the Internet claiming this or claiming that. But up to this point, there's nothing uh, claimed either by Islamic State, Al-Qaeda or any other group. Uh, regarding this, uh, what happened in Strasbourg uh, last night. We've been talking a lot about this uh, fichier S, uh, this uh, watch mm. list, uh, um, uh, risks to national security. This suspect was on that list. Many of the experts we've been speaking to said it's really more of a surveillance tool than an actual way to grab people before they commit acts. Are there things that could be mm. done differently <clears throat> with the fichier It's not even a surveillance tool because inside the fichier S, you have many categories. So in some of the categories, it will lead to surveillance. But what it means, uh, if he has in general, is that he, is, he was noticed by the authorities as someone who is potentially radicalized and potentially dangerous. So it's not uh, a conviction. It's not, uh, it doesn't mean that all the fichiers will act, will commit terror attacks uh, or, or not. It doesn't, just like um, signaling someone, uh, you know. And as I told you, since the regular police raided his home yesterday morning, it means that he wasn't considered that dangerous. Otherwise, they would have done things another way. They wouldn't have raided him like this as a regular, as a regular a criminal. And today, because all because of the layers, all the layers of flaws uh, that are piling uh, since years, the scope of people who enter in this in the criteria of FCS is getting wider and wider, which makes the job of uh, of the services much more difficult. Because today we are talking about twenty thousand FCS. You know, like, like, like maybe a small minority of them are really dangerous. Mm -hmm. So now it goes for about human analysis, how all this information is going to be analyzed. Because we are drowning uh, in information, but what is lacking is good analysis. And uh, as you should know, we are talking about human material. So much, much, much unpredictable, especially for those who decide to act, uh, uh, to act alone. So not constituting a crew, a real crew, to commit a terror attack. Because as you notice also, all the, uh, the attempts to create terror attacks in Europe since, uh, since years are failing because the services, the services are putting them down. And the attacks that are succeeding between brackets are attacks made by loners. So what's your thought here then? Is this very likely, in your opinion, the act of a lone wolf, not someone who was? I wouldn't say a lone wolf because it, for me it doesn't exist, a lone wolf. Uh, when you look in, in, into terror attacks, you always see that there is ramifications for the arms, for the places to hide, etc., etc. There's no real lone wolf except the Brevi case, and it was the, 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 far, the far right. It wasn't jihadi at all a few, years, a few years ago. So it's getting more difficult because, yes, when you buy a knife, or when you take a knife to attack someone, you are undetected. While when you try to buy arms, you could be detected, you see. And even if you want, you want to go further in this, uh, uh, on this, even those who are uh, trafficking arms wouldn't want to sell arms to a known terrorist. But they'll continue their business and sell criminals because that's the way it goes. They want their business to be more prosperous. They don't want to be involved in terror attacks. So it's getting harder to get arms too, you see. But of course, there's no 100% uh, non-failure uh, uh, terror prevention either in Europe or in the world. Wasim, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. So Wasim Nasr.